All right, so hello there, everyone. So you are here for Navigating Career Transitions, also known as Will I Get Stuck? I'm Sherilyn Kawakami Schultz, Scientific Resource Specialist and Program Analyst in the Office of Intramural Training and Education at the NIH. I'm so glad you're taking the time to join me and our speakers today to, to explore this real and common fear during career transitions. And again, just a note, like Emily said, we're recording the portion where I'm speaking, but we will not be recording the breakout rooms. So this session is divided into two parts. So I'm here to introduce the session and my portion will take approximately 20 minutes. So I'll anchor us in this experience before offering some practical advice for pushing through the fear and onto the career path that works for you. After this short introduction, you'll have the chance to join breakout rooms with our speakers, whom we have grouped based on the type of transitions they've experienced, such as academia to industry, industry to academia, switching fields, and more. So if you want to look at what those details are right now, you can look in the Whova agenda. We'll have um, about six different breakout rooms, I think, again, in the second half of this session. So you will have 30 minutes in the rooms to talk with these speakers, which I realize is not that long. I want to echo what all of the uh, speakers and, and all the webinars have been saying in the Career Symposium, which is that these connections and short conversations are just the beginning. So plan to follow up with a speaker if you want to talk to them more. Again, these connections are just a seed. You can use the Whova platform uh, messaging function, you can use email, and you can use LinkedIn to connect with speakers you are interested in learning more from and grow that connection with more conversation. So I will be linking to resources in this presentation. So if you want the slides right away, you can download them from within Whova. I'm highlighting here how you can find the handout section in the Whova agenda. So go ahead if you're interested and download these slides um, to explore more of the links that um, I'll be talking about. So with that, I want to introduce by, say, by saying over the past decade, I've met with hundreds of trainees who are exploring careers and making career transitions. And I hear a lot of the same questions as I'm talking with trainees, such as, if I leave academia, will I be able to come back? Or what if I leave what I know and get stuck in a job I don't like? Or what if I wanna switch fields? Is it too late? Or I'm interested in roles in industry, but I've heard the jobs are really unstable. Is this true? So all of these are really good questions. And most of, these, most of the time, these questions are coming from graduate students and postdocs who have spent a lot of time and energy in an academic or a similar research environment. And the upcoming career transition is a really big and new change. So I wanna talk a little bit more about where this fear um, can come up. So fear of getting stuck, so this idea of getting stuck can be fear of the unknown. I mean, again, I just said it's, you know, maybe it's a big change and thinking about places you haven't been and things that you haven't done. Um, it might be fear of rejection. It might be fear that you will make the quote unquote wrong choice and regret it. We have a really great webinar that I've linked here um, from our mental health and wellness series that highlights both the choice overload as well as what we can experience as stubborn persistence due to sunk cost fallacy. And Dr. Milgram talked about both of these yesterday in her webinar, which we will, we will, we did record and we'll send out to you on why career choices are so hard. So we can be overwhelmed by having so many choices and hesitant to move on from something that we have invested so much time and energy in. I wanna talk about another thing that uh, Sharon highlighted yesterday. And this is the idea that we can encounter in some environments that there are careers that are more prestigious or more deserving than others. And I urge you as you're working through this process and framing your career decision in terms of what is right for you, not to make decisions because of what someone else wants you to do or thinks of you, even if you value their opinion highly. At the end of the day, you are the one who needs to be happy with your choice. And so I like to say you are part of a piece of a bigger puzzle, a brilliant mosaic that is um, the scientific workforce that needs all of us, not a pyramid uh, where there are some at the top. So at this point, you're probably thinking, well, that's all great, but really tell me, Sherilyn, will I get stuck? So let me make four points um, about this question. First, a really common source of job dissatisfaction that we see among people that we've worked with is mismatch between your values and the values of your workplace. 
So one of the things that I would recommend you do proactively in order to not get stuck is to use an assessment to determine your top values. And I will uh, link to this assessment very soon. Second, a lot of time I have conversations with trainees who are worried that they will lose their skill set if they move to a job and they aren't using it. But really, your skill set will in continue to increase, not decrease. In order to remind yourself of this, I encourage you um, to keep a master document as you continue to grow as a professional of all of the experience you have and the skill set that you have. A lot of these skills will be like riding a bike. You might wobble just a tiny bit when you start again, but you'll remember quickly what you need to. So this master document can help remind you of how much um, you have grown. And third, we just came off of uh, Dr. Conlon Laurie's talk about you know, hiring trends and, and what's going on in the market. And I don't have a crystal ball but I think it is very unlikely that you will get stuck. And some of the reasons that I think that this is that uh, the unemployment rate among biomedical scientists has and uh, will, I think, remain extremely low. You will have a lot of options. And what we've seen over the past decade or so, it is really normal for people to switch roles every few years. And that brings me to the fourth point, which is that you can choose to change to do something different. So if you don't like a role or if you end up thinking, hmm, I'm trying this and this is really not for me, you can choose to change. And I think too, sometimes we have this idea that we're going to go to a career that we've prepared for and everything's going to be amazing right away, but that's not the case. And so we have to prepare ourselves, build up some resilience for sometimes there are growing pains, sometimes there are transition pains. And if we've tried it for a while, and it's really not working out, we can choose to change to something different. So again, I wanna talk about strategies, okay? So I, I hope I've assured you that it's very unlikely you will get stuck. I know you will still worry about it. So I'm, I'm offering some strategies that I recommend to counter this fear and again, avoid getting stuck. One of the things that I really encourage you to do as you're approaching these career decisions and thinking about your transitions is to approach this like the scientist that you are. I have heard many times um, trainees dismiss entire career paths based on one conversation or a few conversations or a story. Gather a lot of data from a lot of different people. The speakers at this career symposium are a great place to start. You have a wide variety of speakers that you can connect with. Use each of them as data points to learn about different careers. Don't eliminate career paths just because of one story or maybe one person who might've had a bad experience. So use a data-driven approach to these career decisions. Gather a lot of data. The second is to plan ahead. Lori talked a little bit about this as well. Your career exploration ideally should start at the beginning of your training, ideally at the beginning of graduate school or at the beginning of your postdoc. Um, if it didn't start now, being um, able to learn about your career options and think about what kind of transition you want to make without having a ticking clock um, is a really great gift that you can give to yourself. So be proactive about exploring your career options. We've repeated this again and again, and I'm saying it again here. Make sure you utilize the resources that are available to you. There are resources available to you, whether that's here at the NIH, um, the OITE is a great resource for you. Um, you have a grad or postdoc office, perhaps, if you're in an academic environment. Um, you have your network to tap into, um, to learn about more resources. So use the resources that are available to you. Um, and this is, again, part of this data gathering and making sure that you have all of the information to be approaching this process. So. Speaking of resources, um, again, I've linked in the resource slide assessments you can use to think about your skills, interests, and values and how they can help you think about career paths that are a good fit for you. And again, you've heard Lori and Sharon and I say this because we really do mean it. One of the best things that you can do is talk to people. So again, the whole career symposium is centered around this because this is the best way to learn about careers and build a supportive network to reach your next career path. Reach out to people and ask them questions about career 
uh, their career path. We've talked a lot about informational interviews, help or ask them their strategies. So they were in your place once. So ask them, you know, did you have this worry about getting stuck and how did you deal with it? That's going to be a great question to ask our speakers in the, in the breakout rooms in a, in a few minutes. And eventually after you've had these conversations with them, established connections, heard about their strategies, learn from them, they become part of your supportive network that can link you to opportunities if what they do is what you would like to do. Okay, so what should you do next? I'm gonna break this down for you in terms of recommending short and long-term things to do. So I recommend today that you engage on the community boards. I've been looking at them over the past few days and I see multiple ones talking about different types of transitions, whether it is going from academia to industry or industry to academia. So take a look at those, engage on those community boards. Again, there's a lot of people here um, who can offer advice or you can commiserate with if you have the same um, set of concerns. Get contact information from speakers. I mentioned in the beginning that the time you have with this set of speakers is going to be a little short, but you can use the Whova platform. You can search for them on LinkedIn. So get their contact information so that you'll be able to follow up with them later. And uh, many of us love checking to-do lists and accomplishing goals. Um, I've linked here to an OIT blog post on how to make SMART goals. So that's specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely goals that will help you keep moving forward. I really love using SMART goals because I think, again, this is a big process and it is very new and can feel very scary for a lot of us. And so instead of thinking about it as a huge thing, the SMART goals process helps us break it down and make small measurable goals um, that we can accomplish in moving forward. So speaking of goals, in the next week and month, send emails to follow up with speakers and peers that you met here at the Career Symposium. Set up informational interviews and use them to learn more about the career paths you're interested in. Revisit that to-do list or set of goals. Check off the items you're completed. If you're like me, that feels really good. And set a new list of goals so that you continue to make forward and uh, make progress. So, I have a resource slide here. I'm gonna pause for a minute um, because that's the end of my spiel right now. Um, one thing I do wanna highlight on this resources section is this seminar on the psychology of career decision-making um, that's linked here. It's on our OITE YouTube channel, which is a wealth of other recordings, but this one in particular, I find you know I referenced um, choice, overload, choice overload or the paradox of choice and um, uh, the second one is escaping me right now. Um, but those two things that can be can really come up and uh, make it hard for us to to think about moving forward in this career decision. So that's a great one to check out this um, webinar that's part of our mental health and wellness series. Again, the OITE YouTube channel, if you're at the NIH, the OITE career counselors for intramural trainees are here and available and want to help you. I mentioned a few times tools for assessing skills, interests, and values. I'm linking here Science Careers My IDP and Imagine PhD. The note I want to make about Science Careers My IDP, and Laurie had mentioned this as well, is it hasn't been updated, but I really still think that the assessments are um, a good part to have you sort through your values and determine for you what's at the top. I mentioned earlier that this mismatch between your values and the values of your workplace can really lead to unhappiness. And when I've had trainees take those assessments and look at what's coming up for them, it's a really helpful tool to think about what's important to you as you're moving forward in your career search. So Science Careers, My ADP, those assessments can be really great for that. 